Today, I want us to make an art puzzle box. We're going to um, follow these steps, and I will maybe leave that right there. First of all, I want to show you a puzzle box. This one has various paintings of mine. If you turn it over, it has that bird. And then if you open it up, here's some water birds. And on the back of that side, some other birds standing in water. And then let's see if we can find the last side there. That's the puzzle to try to find all of the different sides of the box. And you can put any kind of pictures um, drawings that you've done, paintings that you've done, or even cut out paintings out of, uh, pictures out of a magazine. This is another one with birds. This one has, a uh, African bird. I want to come back to that one. There's nothing on that side so i need to get another bird here's the kookaburra that i showed you one other day in a different video and then let's see if we can get this around to cardinals i call this one mr and Ms. north carolina because it's our state bird the cardinal is state bird for several states and then this one is uh large painting that I did of a in, when I was in Sarasota, Florida, and it's of a pelican. And we rode up to that pelican on a boat, and he just sat there and let me get his uh, photograph. I want to show you that African bird again because there's a nice story to him. This is one of my greeting cards with this bird on it. When I was in Johannesburg uh, riding around seeing the animals, I kept seeing these round balloon-like shapes. And I asked the guide, what were they? And he said, that's the nest of a weaver bird. And as I tell my grandchildren the story about this bird, I tell them that when this bird grows up and gets ready to be married, then his head turns orange and he knows that he needs to build a nest. And so he works real hard and builds his nest and then he flutters his wings to let the mama bird know that he's ready. And the mama bird comes and inspects the nest. And if she likes the nest, then they get married and have babies and move into that nest. But if she does not like that nest, if he did not do a good job, then she tears the nest up and he has to start all over again. So we have to do our best at whatever we're trying to do. So these are the paintings that I'm going to put on. This, this is a collage that I did of, can't remember if that was a white rhino or a black rhino. This is a small piece of a larger painting that I did with zebra and wildebeest. And um, they stand together a lot of times. And it's because zebras can see, but they can't hear good. And wildebeest can hear, but they can't see good. And so God made them friends so that they can work together to watch out for the lions and the other predators that they have. Um, 
the animals were painted with watercolor and then the background is the Japanese washi paper. This one is an elephant and it's all different washi papers. And there's a story with that, this one too. Um, it's called the elephant and the dung beetle. The dung beetle is a little beetle that walks along behind the elephants. And the elephant's dung is not completely digested and it contains grass and grass seeds and dung. And the little beetle rolls it up and pushes it along until it finds some sand with no grass and it pushes it under the sand and it does that all day long. And finally, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the season, there is a rainy season and God makes it rain and there is fertilizer and rain and dirt and grass seeds, and that makes that little dung beetle that nobody ever thinks is worth anything, the single most important ecological animal in Africa. So I tell my grandchildren again about this story. Sometimes we don't think we're important, but we could be the least of these and still have a very important job to do. This one is another one that I'm going to put in. It's a combination watercolor and Japanese rice papers of this turtle. And then I think I'll add this one of the zebras with the giraffe in the background. Once we have um, our pictures selected, we need to mark off with, um, let me find my little square. Cut out a square the size that you want to make your box and trace around it so that you have four in a row and then two on each side. Those two could be anywhere on any side and put some tabs on it so that you can put glue on the tabs, use a bone folder or scissors and scrape across so that it will fold more evenly. Let's just do that right here. and do that on every mark and then fold it. And as you put this together, do four of them and you will have um, your four boxes. Now, if you wanna make a lot of these, I would suggest that you go to Uline or some other company that sells boxes and buy these little white boxes that are two inches by two inches. But you could make it a larger box, whatever you want, as long as you make your own pattern. And I think for um, high schoolers or adults, um, it's fun to learn how to make three-dimensional things anyway. The next thing is we have to attach the four boxes together. And we're going to do that by lining up the four boxes. And then we're going to either put a piece of tape, but even better, have a little piece of paper and glue the paper in th these three places. In the middle on the top, and on each side of the last two boxes. You will not have one here, or here, or here. Only these three places. 
And now that is the one that's on top. Let's open these all the way out so you can see it's connected in the middle on the top and on this side and this side, but it's still open in the middle. So you got that? All right, so once you have the boxes put together, if it's individually two inches, then you're going to need a picture that is four inches by four inches. Cut your pictures that are four inches by four inches. That fits. Now, we have to fold it in half. Open it up and fold it the other way. And we should be able to cut this into four pieces now and have one for each one of these boxes. I'm turning it upside down because I can see that fold better. You want to do this fairly carefully. All right, now. Okay, so let's just attach this. On this one where the box is hooked together in the middle, I guess we could have left this strip all together, but we want it to be able to bend. And so I usually go ahead and cut them apart. Okay, so there is the first side. We were able to go to a koala hospital in Australia, and they were such sweet animals. Um, they sleep most of the day, but a lot of times a mama or even babies will get run over by cars, and so they needed, I think there's only one koala hospital in the world, and you can adopt the koalas. Um, A koala is not a bear, of course, it's a marsupial. And then stick them down. Move down carefully. Nope. Okay, so there's that one. Be sure when you start a new side to look at the other side and be sure that you have the top and then the top. Okay. Um, after you have all of your sides glued on, if you have little edges like this, a lot of times I like to um, just paint over the edges on the ones where I see the box. If that bothers you, just paint over that, either with the color that's right next to it or just put a black frame around it, and that will solve the problem. So I think you'll enjoy um, making these boxes, maybe make one with your child and um, enjoy a new puzzle box that you can make.
Oops, that's the way it is. And there. And I have another couple of sides to put on, but I think you know how to do it now. So, um, trace around your squares so that you have four that you can put together and then put them together with tape on the top in the middle and on the sides on both sides like this and then you'll be cutting each one of your pictures into fourths be sure to fold it to get it exactly in the middle and then if you need to you will um paint around the edges and then just enjoy your box thanks okay the boxes are finished <laughs>